Hey everyone, Ryan from e Bike Escape. And today I have something special for you. I am riding with Pokey Pedal Bob. He owns an electric bike company, e bike, that he has decked out with the trailer and tons of unique accessories that he's made himself. And he was on an overnight trip in my area, so I got a chance to talk to him and have him walk me through his electric bike. So I hope you enjoyed this one. All right, so welcome Pokey Pedal Bob. Maybe before we get into the bike, maybe you can uh, explain how you earned that moniker uh, and then we'll talk about your, your excellent looking electric bike here. Okay, so, so Pokey Pedaling, so, uh, so so I, I live in Stevens Point, about 50 miles from here. I rode up here yesterday, I'm riding, riding back tonight. And down there I started a, uh, it's not really a club, just, just these group rides called Pokey Pedaling Stevens Point. Uh, they were predicated on, I used to live in Portland, Oregon, and they were predicated on some rides that took place there. They're, they're slow rides, but slow means like, six miles an hour or eight miles an hour I, I, typically the rides wouldn't go more than about 12 or 13 miles and it would take us three hours with all the destinations and the slow riding uh it was, so it was a ride so it was a ride for anybody from 8 to 80. i had I even had a 90 plus year old on a couple of rides um, and so we'd go these would be destination rides like the tiny museum ride we'd go visit a few museums in town and sometimes i'd, get, I'd be able to find someone to join meet us there and talk about uh, we have pokey pedaling potluck picnics. Everyone brings uh, something for the picnic and we ride off about four miles to some park and we have a picnic. Uh, the, the most popular ride was the chocolate ride. Uh, I had 40 people on that ride. We, we went to four different places. We had one place we had uh, death bike chocolate cake. One place we had uh, chocolate cheese. Oh, one place we had truffles, and then we ended up at Culver's for chocolate <laughs> custard, and that was like over you know eight miles. Yeah. So 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 all these so you get the idea. These rides, they're rides, but it's transportation rides. The concept of us all riding bikes is to use the bikes to actually go to the destinations, yeah. and that's to me that's an important concept to spread. You know, they're not just recreational vehicles they actually can get you to places you need to go yep so so I so I did for five years I did about 50 of these rides uh, until uh, I stopped about three years ago for some personal family health issues I, I just got too overwhelmed and it sort of it just stopped happening but sure. that that's pokey pedal Bob good great and then uh, so you brought over your electric bike company electric bike uh, overnight and you've had this for two years now maybe you can talk about what model this is and why you chose electric bike company and then we'll talk a little bit more about the details of multi-day trips and talk about range and those sort of things so 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 I bought the, the bike about two years ago uh, and had it shipped out uh, I'd been looking at e-bikes online and I, and I came across them about two years before that and sort of, you know, sort of, uh, you know, I'm not an expert on electric bikes and and how to compare them, but I, but I learned stuff over the process. I was looking at bikes, and why why did I choose an electric bike company? Well, one of the reasons. So the the person who owns that company is out in Newport Beach. He he posted a number of posts. And some of them talked about his philosophy of bicycling and why he was making these bikes and, and what he and other other aspects where he's trying to bring bikes to he's the, the owner's from South Africa. He was trying to bring bikes to people in South Africa so they could uh, for transportation. And so so one of the main reasons is I liked his philosophy of what he thought a, a bicycle or an e-bicycle should be and how it could be used. Because I figured if the if the owner uh, wants to create something that functionally similar to what I'm looking for, then probably the bike he comes up with is something that I would like. Uh, 
the, the electric bike company, the guy who owns it, he's a battery guy. He's not a bike guy. So he, he hired someone to design the bike. Uh, so, but I, but I also liked, you know, you know, you know, it's it's hard to say why I chose. I, I don't, you know, it's been two years now. Uh, the specs seemed good. It had good reviews uh, online, uh, and so I just decided, hey, let let's let's go for it. Oh, there were there were a couple features I was looking for, uh, like like for example, like disc brakes were a must because I knew I'd be towing a lot of weight. And so that ruled out like the Copenhagen wheel because mm -hmm. I assume it's still the same way, but the Copenhagen wheel requires uh, rim brakes. So I, so that was was an option. There's a lot a lot of companies that you know, that somehow ruled out. Uh, I didn't want I, I didn't want a derailleur. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I just wanted a one speed. Now of course any bike you can make a one speed, but when two years ago when he was selling this bike derailleurs weren't even an option. Now I understand you can get a, or maybe they were an option, but it was, you had to special order it or something. Sure. But now it's just a standard feature because people want them. But I, but I, I didn't really want a derailleur. My, my regular bicycle ride that I, that I take when I'm not e-biking uh, is an internal hub. All my, you know, so actually I have two bikes that are internal hubs. So it's, it's just a philosophy. I, don't, I just don't want to bother with it. Oh, the another feature that I liked about the bike is it, it's rust proof. That's important in, on a, in a beach town, Newport Beach, where the salt air from the ocean. But I still thought it was a good design. So all the all the hardware is stainless steel, the spokes, all the nuts, all yeah. of it's an aluminum frame. The brakes are uh, hydraulic, so there's no wire cable. So it was just a design feature that I I just liked that he was he was you know building a bike to go after uh, you know, you know from a, to make it low maintenance in that fashion. So. And what model was this called when you bought it? Is this it is the Model S? It's Model still the Model S. Okay. So back two years ago, there was the Model S, the step through, and the Model C, which yep. had a has a top bar. Uh, I do step throughs because. Yep. You know, because I can't kick my feet over this, right? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, all bikes that are just for poking around town, you know, step throughs are way more convenient. But everyone gets what they want. Yep. You know, so there, are, but there are no boys and girls bikes. You know, it, it, you know I, I my biking background, I, I sort of uh, uh, like sort of a European mindset where you know, step throughs are, are, are most bikes are that way. So it's the Model S. Now there's a number of other models it's like five or six different models that they sell of different geometries yes yeah. and i'm not really that familiar with those but i'm i'm happy with the model s and some of the other things at least from my perspective that make electric bike company unique is they're all assembled in the u.s um and they also allow you to customize pretty much any paint color i'm not sure if they allowed that no, two years ago no there were just three colors there, yeah but red was really cool. yeah i mean this looks excellent and then uh, the other thing that I think is a little bit more recent is the dual batteries and I know you have a swappable battery for the rear but I know they have a front basket battery as well so just some things that I've noted as I've been looking into the company maybe we can talk a little bit about the battery capacity maybe you can talk about how the battery capacity is holding up after two years uh, and then maybe on some some commentary about range uh, and then we can get into the, some of the multi-day tri trips, camping, etc., that you're getting into. So the, so so the battery. So this is a 17 amp hour battery, and I have a in one of the bins. I have a spare 17 amp hour battery. So it, so it, after two years, I do a. When I first got each battery, I did some benchmarking. I, I went to a relatively flat 10 mile loop and just did loops, and each loop I. I just recorded, you know, remaining voltage level, and so when I, so I've only done that twice. I mean, when I did that, when I first got the, the original battery, and then I did it again at the start of this year, and I didn't detect any decline after one year. So, uh, you know, I, I'm guessing, like like most of these lithium ions, the you know, 
I don't know how long, five, eight years, I don't know before, maybe they're not so many to use. Uh, so from a range perspective, uh, unloaded, I can get about, you know, the original battery, I get about, I could get over 60 miles going at about, uh, on, rel on flat road, going about 14, 15 miles an hour. The newer battery, which I just had now for about four months, not quite not quite as as much it's about maybe mid to high 50s 57 something like that so I don't know why they're, it's different but uh, that's still plenty you know so that's that's nice that's nice to know that's, that's a long way to go uh, but that's unladen and that's on a ideal a near ideal uh, route in real riding you know where there might be some reason you know just some moderate hills uh, I get maybe 55 on the new battery and 50 on the older one, roughly. I sure. mean, you know, it's, it's so it's you know it's about 10 percent from ideal, but that that's pretty good. I mean, there's hills. I'm I'm, I'm up up shifting, so I'm using more battery on, on the hills. So so that's reasonable, I think. And and how many miles total? Do you know how many miles you put on the bike so far? Uh, I think I just turned 2,000. Okay, this trip. nice. There you go. 2002. Oh no, 2005. I had to ride you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now let's talk about some of the the camping setup. I know what's maybe first apparent is you know the stabilization you have down here, which is really unique. So the bike doesn't tip over, and then of course you have this custom attached uh, trailer that we were just talking about. So maybe you can talk about you know some of the weight distribution. I know the battery is kind of up high, so you kind of um, have this extra stand here which as my understanding is a is a motorcycle stand so maybe you can talk about some of the things that you've done to prepare yourself for for camping so uh, so so maybe from the the, the stabilization stand so uh, for for various reasons with the geometry I had to build a little this is a this isn't the stock uh, kickstand that came with the bike I had the I had to shorten this distance. I had to get a shorter uh, kickstand, so I built a little block set I can to sort of make it so that the bike stays. It leans, but not too far. Uh, with the battery up here, it can, it can get a little top heavy. And if, and if I put appreciable weight up here, which I've tried, it's really top heavy. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so keeping it near upright with a little lean. Uh, is helpful, but then of course, as you're near upright, a bump or wind can more likely blow it over. Right. And so I got this setup. This is I found it on a motorcycle site, uh, some kind of jack. I forget what it's called exactly, but some kind of jack, and it so it just creates a counter force. Right. It, it, this is adjustable, uh, so uh, I can I can sort of just create tension so that it, it creates some reasonable stability sure. uh, but not it's not rock solid but there's some reasonable stability and another feature of the jack is that so what doing multi-day trips uh, you might get a flat mm -hmm. these standard on EBC bikes is uh, that they put what they call slime in the tires and the tires themselves uh, have some kind of uh, thicker uh, puncture resistant you know, it's like a, a, a Schwalbe sort, mar yeah. Schwalbe marathon sort. So, so it's unlikely to get a flat, but if it does get a flat, it's filled with slime. So presumably the slime will fill the hole and you'll be able to just ride on or just fill it back up and ride on. But if you have to change a tire, I can, I can crank up that jack to raise the tire up three, four inches uh, so I can work, so I can remove a wheel and then then I can, uh, I have some hope of, <laughs> of dealing with a, a flat out on the road in the middle of nowhere because we're a rural state, yeah. right? but, but you, know, you know, there were no garages for 30 miles <laughs> on my ride up here, for example. So, yes. I, you know, so I get a problem, I have to deal with it or I have to call somebody. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so that's sort of the, you know, that's a, the trailer, um, it's a company called Bikes at Work out of Ames, Iowa. They make excellent trailers, all aluminum. Uh, my intent was not to get the lightest trailer. That, 
but I, I wanted something durable because I'd be having a lot of weight. I, my, the trailer weighs about 30 pounds, and I, I have about 70 pounds of stuff back here. My, my, the battery weighs 10 pounds. I have a, a kryptonite, uh, forget about it lock, that weighs a lot, you know, five, five to eight pounds or something like that. Actually, I have, and, you know, so, and, and other stuff, and then, uh, and then this is loaded up. I stayed overnight here in the hotel, so I just had whatever I needed, you know, food and, and such. So, so, I, so I'm, I'm towing 100 pounds in this trailer, and, and, and I planned to, t to, to take more. Uh, on multi-day trips, so I, so a lightweight trailer just isn't going to be able to carry 150 pounds. Uh, these bikes work trailers can tow 300 pounds. That's that's what they're rated for. Sure. Uh, I have a. This is my second bikes at work. I have a, a two foot by five foot long trailer that I used to to carry mulch and dirt and and all sorts of stuff. And I I've carried 300 pounds on it. So and and. And, the, and I, I should mention, with, I've used this bike to haul the 300 pound trailer going up reasonably steep hills. And in its, in, in its top gear, I can go 15 miles an hour of overpasses and towing 300 pounds. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so that's the trailer. Uh, and that's kind of why I chose, this is a shorter trailer because it's, it's for camping. One of the, one of the things I want to do for multi-day trips is I want to carry, I have a, a Brompton folding bike and I want to take that along because then when I get to a destination, uh, I can set up my tent, I, I bought a, a stand-up tent, eight feet by eight feet for camping. I can put the bike and the trailer inside it and, and sleep next to it and there's room <laughs> for all that. Because I figure camping, uh, if your if your bike is inside a tent, no one's going to mess with it. People right. don't t typically go into tents yes. at campgrounds. Yeah. Uh, if it was locked to a tree somewhere, uh, I don't know how secure that would be. Uh, but I'm gonna I want to bring a folding bike along, so that once I get to the camp destination, then for my day trips, Older. I can take the folding bike. Yeah. So it's sort of the Winnebago <laughs> towing the Volkswagen. Yes. That's that's kind of what I envision. The, the Brompton weighs about 25 pounds, the, the version I have. So that, that's a, a, just an additional weight. The tent weighs, it's a big tent, so it weighs about 15 pounds. So there's more weight coming. So, yeah. But that's kind of the, my, what I envision for my camping adventures. Uh, it's nice to have a setup. I don't want to say weight is irrelevant, uh, because if you get a really steep hill, it's a lot of work, right? Putting in the top gear, it's still, I've got to pedal hard to try to get up some of these hills, but uh, at, at 10 miles an hour, say. Uh, but, but the idea, oh, I see my blinkers on. <laughs> I haven't got to the blinkers yet. Um, you know, but, I, but I, I like the concept. So for people to do overnight trips, there's the ultralight group, where you get a really fast bike that's really light, and you take minimal stuff, and you and then you can go camping, and that's really cool. And but those people are usually really awesome, super athletic sorts. I'm I'm above average athletically, but I'm not like that. I want all my comforts, and I and I'd rather take them even though they weigh stuff. Yeah. But, uh, so. And my philosophy is instead to just sort of get a rig that is able to haul weight, and I just don't care if I go so fast. Right. And so that's that's kind of I kind of think of it like uh, like quiet water canoeing, like canoeing up in the boundary waters, multi-day trips. It's sort of the same thing. You 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 can take a lot of stuff if, if the craft you have is just able to carry it all. Yeah. So. Cool. All right. So now let's talk about accessories. I see some purchased accessories but really not many. I see your SR Sun Tour NCX sus suspension seat posts. I have one as well. Those are fantastic yeah, for I comfort. Like um, but maybe let's just start at the front and you can talk about the what's stock, what's not, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay so yeah so so okay, so there's the the bike, the big red bike. Yeah very red <laughs> and and it came with this mesh basket that's behind this PVC 
and this is a this this rack is built into the frame where the battery is and that so that's the standard bike the things around it I've customized so uh, so the PVC let's start with that it's so this is furniture grade PVC it's a company called form you fit online that I found this they made it there's no markings it comes in eight different colors uh, they're red I, I was just astonished. Their red matches the red of the bike. Like, okay, it, it's meant to be. Um, so, and the nice thing about PVC, but it's easy to work with. I am not a skilled, you know, metal or woodworker or anything like that. So PVC is easy to work with. I just sawed it all by hand. Uh, one of the nice things with the fittings is that your right angles are right angles. You don't have to, unlike with wood, you have to make sure that happens. So, so getting things to fit. So I just and I and I, I had to design it, right? It, it it sits on the edges of the stock basket, so it's supported, you know, down. I have some hose clamps to keep it on. Um, there's electronics, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, the wiring runs through the PVC. So that was one of the choices, nice things about the PVC is, is, is I could run the wiring through it and so it could have a very slick look. Uh, I don't have wires that's, you know, zip tape, zip, zip tied all over the bike. Right. So, um, so maybe let's, well, we'll, we'll just sort of go to things. So, so in this compartment, oh, so there's this little compartment um, in here, well, there's just there's stuff for my trip, but at the bottom of this is the electronics that, that governs the lights I added on. I don't tap into the battery for the extra electronics. Um, right. Part of that is that there's a there's a five volt off the the meter gizmo for like charging your phone, but I didn't want to use that. Right. And it didn't seem a good trade off. You know, battery is range, and it didn't seem a good trade off to give up range to power lights. Yeah. So I just got some five volt batteries. They're they're in a little. Yeah, you can see it down at the bottom there. It's just in a little plastic, you know, yeah. container, and and down at the bottom there it's it, it being in the container oh, I, I made it I tried to make it so it's reasonably water resistant right, it, it, right it, in a drenching rain maybe there'd be some dampness but 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 if it's just a light drizzle things are water resistant right so the batteries are inside that plastic there's all these wires that come out of it they run through you know here's where the wires come out of the basket and go into the frame of the PVC and so from there, it powers, so there are turn signals. So here, here are turn signals. I have buttons up here. So there's the left turn signal. And there's the right turn signal. And they're in the back as well. It is cool to have turn signals on a bike. Yes. Um, it is way cool. Uh, so, and then we've got some, we've got these, head, these, these headlights that are really more for show. Oh, I should mention with the turn signals, uh, I really like these bullet turn signals, right? Again, show is sort of a, an issue, uh, but they came with incandescent lights and they just, in daylight, they just didn't really stand out at all. So I got some other lights that had uh, LEDs and I extracted the guts of those lights and insert, you know, clued something together to insert them into these lights. So, that, so the LEDs, you know, it's it's a it, you can you can see that on a it's it's kind of cloudy today. They're really pretty visible, but even on a bright day, that you can see them. Yeah. Um, these lights, like I said, these are a little more for show, and I don't use them because I, I they're they're underpowered. I, I realize that they they just draw too much power for the 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 five volts that I've got in there. But they're only like 300 lumens. Mm -hmm. So they're not particularly bright lights. They're bright enough for a bike, but they're not particularly bright. So then I, I but for real bike lights, these are, uh, I found these online. They have, they have three settings, uh, 600, 1200, and 2400 lumens each. Okay. So I can have 4800 lumens of... of which is a lot. That, which is a <laughs> lot. If I need to see at night, you know, yeah. it's daytime, so you can't tell. But if I need to see at night, I will see at night. Um, I, I don't think I've used it above 600 lumens. You know, so, so, and and they're they're screwed in. But these are mounted 
typically on a they're screwed into some mounting plate and so they're screwed into the pvc so you someone won't can't just pull it off or flick a switch to take it off i mean yeah. i mean it's pvc if someone really wants to get into the bike yeah. they can just saw it off and take everything so, yeah. so none of this is theft resistant but everything is is, is or theft proof but everything is kind of theft resistant so yeah. so there's an opportunity Oh, one thing, one other thing I wanted to mention about this. So, so I mentioned the basket. Oh, I forgot to mention in here. There's a horn. Unfortunately, so this is a. It's called Loud Bicycle. I, I found it online. Uh, it's a car horn. It's 120 decibels. It, it sounds really loud. I'm having some battery issue with it, so it doesn't work now. I, I would be tooting it. You know, this little button. I, I've used it. It's useful for scaring deer away uh, out on a rural road. But I had to, I had to use it big time when someone did, on a neighborhood street did some really jerk passing maneuver, and and with a car coming about fifty feet away. Yeah. And it is empowering. So normally on your bike and someone does something, some some driver does something like that rude, and you just sort of feel like a victim and and, and helpless. You just yeah. when you've got a horn, the tables are turned. I can just be at, at that at that driver and he, he, they can be back but I'm I'm all of a sudden I can be sort of aggressive in, in sort of conflictive road situations which it's not desirable but I think it's just, it's you're safer when you all of a sudden you are not just a helpless victim and, and, and someone might decide to just leave you alone yeah so so that's the horn um, one other thing about this it locks it's handy um, I found this online. It's, it's it's just some hardware thing. It, they're not cheap, but it's nice to be able to, to again. It's it's to prevent casual theft. Someone someone going in, they want to mess with, want to take stuff or mess with the battery or something. So you know, and and this is acrylic. Yeah, I, I just saw it off. Oh, and all these all these bolts and screws. Right, it, it's stable. PVC needs to be stabilized. I didn't want to glue it all. Yeah. Uh, Especially since I may need to take it off. I mean, part of building, putting all the wires together, is um, if something goes wrong, and I have to take, I have to fix some of the wiring. My, I have to take it apart. Well, I can just unbolt right. these and, and take, take, you know, keep things apart. And so I have, I have connectors in various places. Like there's connectors here. And there's connectors here, right? So, so I can just take off one thing and take the wire apart and, and do some battery testing. Yeah. So, so that's part of the design. Um, so the wires. So, so, right. The the EBC has wires to go through the frame, but this wire I put through the frame sure. to go back here and up here into this unit to power the rear. Rear blinkers. The rear blinkers. Yeah. So, um, it was actually surprising, but for, you know, left and right blinkers, front, back, with switches on your handlebars, is actually a fairly complicated circuit. It, 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 it took a lot of a lot of work to figure that out. Um, slow vehicle. <laughs> you know, I, I I want you know when when cars are behind me, uh, I don't care if they know what I am. I just want them to decide they need to avoid it. Yep. And so to have a big slow vehicle sign, you know, tells a message. These are these are two columns of taillights. Uh, the little hole drilled in it. That's where the on button is. I can I can I just push that and I, and I have taillights. And these particular taillights, they're only about an inch long, but they have have uh, accelerometers inside. So as you slow, they brighten. So I have brake lights, and and I two columns of three. It, it resembles many what a car might look like, right? Two you know columns of brake lights with a tail light and a turn signal underneath. Yep. And so that was the uh, part of part of the design on the bike was uh, I kind of want to I want to speak the language of car, yep. but the light the, the way the lights. Are arranged. That's part of the language of cars. The horn is part of the language of cars. Yeah. But right? to, to kind of look like a like a car, I think it's helpful out on roads. 
to get other vehicles to uh, just sort of give you some respect. Yeah. Oh, this. Okay, so with the trailer, I this this is like one of the I, I've only used this trailer for about a month now, but but I have plans to put some kind of frame on it and turn signals at the back of the trailer. Right, you can sort of see that the turn signals with the trailer get, are a little obscured, so it's yeah. not ideal. So I want to put turn signals at the back of the trailer. I've already built them, you know, for my other trailer, but that's a much simpler usage model. So I just, but, and so the wiring for the trailer, for the turn signals on the trailer, connects. I take this off, and and there's a, I can pull the a, a, a connector apart to these signals and connect it to the trailer wire. To, to light the, the trailer turn signals. So it's just like a truck would do. Yeah. The truck's got a similar device for, for connecting to electronics with the trailer. Right now. So, um, so that's what that is. Uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I, think I, I, missed. I think that's good. I just want to give a little bit of a close up of the cockpit here. So we obviously had the power button uh, for the bike itself, pedal assist up and down. This one, I believe, That's is the I'm turn the right signal. Right. And then this That's would be the horn. horn. And then obviously has these big... Uh, oh, the motorcycle mirrors. Yeah, the motorcycle mirrors. One which... of the nice things about a cruiser bike is that you can mount these signal, these, these mirrors to the front of you. Uh, right, so commonly you have like, like either on your helmet, a little mirror on your helmet, or you'll have end bar mirrors of course it's sort of better if they're flat but the problem is, is if you're looking right you're, you're on a street there's traffic around you're looking ahead i don't want to turn my head way away for a second to be looking at a mirror and with front mirrors like this in a, in a cruiser cockpit i just can divert my eyes to look and and peripherally my per 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 peripheral vision still can see ahead so so i don't have so so it's just a safety thing i can actually see way better behind me and i don't have to really abandon keeping track of what's in front of me yeah so these yeah, so the mirrors great well i think that pretty much sums it up i really appreciate your time and uh i if you have questions in the comments i'll do my best to forward them maybe if you have time you can answer any custom questions that people have if they want to sure. know some details uh, i won't put any pressure if you don't want to do it but <laughs> thanks so much for your time and uh, i hope everyone enjoyed this video with pokey pedal bob and his awesome looking electric bike company e-bike